I was a part of the Hancock 38, and uh, boy, was it frustrating to be in front of that judge who kept reminding me of my granddaughter. Nice, brown, chubby face. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Judge Gideon. Um, something that happened subsequent to the trial was um, our community wanting to go back. John Hamilton's uh, original document, the War Crimes Indictment, which was brought to the base and read. Um, and so the group uh, said, well, we would like to try to figure out a way to get this thing tightened so that we could help the judge and the police and the state troopers and the court clerks and anybody that's involved with this racket this mechanism of war just to roll forward, how do we help these people understand that we're all accountable in this? I mean, I am, John is, Alan, all, each one of us is in one way or another. So I had the privilege of sitting down with Ramsey Clark to go through our document, sentence by sentence, to tweak it and to figure out how do we word this so that people can understand. So I want to thank John Amadon for his camera work, who was at the base when 15 folks, uh, James Ricks and um, Ed Canan, who were both here with their incredibly wonderful voices, stood at the base. And I think part of what happened was people jumping out of cars and having not been announced that we were showing up at the gate I actually didn't get the golden band to do a catering job, but um, <laughs> these guys read this updated war crimes indictment, and I think in the reading, the police officers, the soldiers that were standing at the gate, some of the state troopers were kind of confounded and a little taken aback in hearing what they heard and realizing, and I think it was um, Mary Snyder, who was one of our co one of the co-defendants, she's 87 years old, 88? Oh, she just had her birthday, okay. Um, she said to me later, she says, you should have heard the cops in the car when they were trying to say, but we're nice people, we're just following orders, you know? <laughs> in other words, it was hitting them as they were hearing the words, but the other, piece to this whole thing is that I go back to remembering when Artie Rodriguez, who is the new president of the United Farm Workers Union, came to Cornell to speak. And I used years and another lifetime, I used to work with the United Farm Workers Union when Cesar Chavez was the president. And many of us of the older ilk would remember the grapes and uh, gallo wine boycott and all. Um, and the, the years, the decades of struggle that it took to get farm workers the right to vote and have their own collective bargaining and all of that. And th there was this huge effort um, by farm workers and the supporters within the state of California to get legislation done. And Artie came to Cornell, I said, you can't depend on legislation. You gotta be out in the streets. And so I go back to us sitting here looking at the issue of drones or any part of the massive mechanism of empire rolling forward to do the total global domination, which is what the ultimate plan is. Um, and the bottom line is, as Kathy had said so eloquently, we have to be as much as willing to be as much in opposition by putting our bodies on the line. That's the, the, the last word. We have to sacrifice as much as other people around the world are on the receiving end of our violence. We have to sacrifice ourselves. And again, look at how is it that every piece of our lives, every moment, is it that we're connected? How do we unplug from this whole thing? So thank you.